Hey everybody, today we're going to be covering chapter 5, going over communications and how do we communicate uh, not only on with uh, dispatch, but also with uh, health, other healthcare providers as well as the general public. We're going to discuss uh, how do we communicate, how we communicate as a team as well as therapeutic communication skills. Every day that we decide that we want to make any kind of verbal response that is a form of communication so obviously every call that we go on involves some type of communication from the time that we get dispatched out we're getting on our radios we're letting dispatch know that we're in route we are communicating with specialized equipment that is designed to allow us to talk mo across m a multitude of miles to talk to whoever we need to we have to be able to communicate not only with a uh, dispatch and other team members, but also patients and their family members in an effective and therapeutic manner to where we're not intruding on their beliefs or wishes. Within our emergency communication system, you have your base station. This is your dispatch. Uh, You'll know where the di where their main dispatch is because if you look near them, there's usually a very large radio tower next to it as well. Usually they try to have it with on a pretty suitable terrain. Usually if they're able to, they want to put it on top of a hill. So that way it's there, there's no um, barriers that the, the signal's having to go through. Uh, usually it's also that um, if they're able to, they get it within a suitable distance to a hospital. So that way it can also serve as a medical command center if needed. This would be an example of a communication system. As you can see, she, ha she you know, not every dispatch is going to have as many screens as this. But with the one that they're having, she, you can see one of the ones that she has pulled up is a map so that she can help guide the uh, responding units to where they're having to go. You also have a land mobile radio system. With these systems, these are the radios that is actually carried within your vehicle. They are mounted within them. They have both a transmitter and a receiver. Um, these don't have as much of a range as the base station does. They usually have about a 10 to 15 mile range just from the radio system. Um, now there is other equipment that you can use to boost that signal that we'll cover shortly. But this is that way you can t uh, communicate whether it's from base dispatch to the vehicle, um, from the vehicle to a portable radio, truck to truck, um, your vehicle to the hospital, wherever you need it to communicate. You can also have a port your portable radio. This is what you're actually carrying on your body. So that way when you're out of the truck, you can still communicate with whoever you need to. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, these don't have a very, very large range. Um, usually, if you're lucky, maybe up to a mile, maybe two. Um... But these can be boosted when you're if you happen to have a repeater nearby. A lot of some trucks, definitely trucks that operate out in the community, their uh, apparatuses have repeaters built into them, so that way they have a mobile repeater system. Um, you otherwise, definitely in our area, usually our repeaters are mounted on towers that are fixed um, within our communities. This will be the example of a portable handheld radio. Those repeaters that I was telling you about, these receive um, transmissions and amplify them so that way they have a larger range span. So that way they can boost that signal to get to ultimately to where you're needing it to go. The, uh, the issue with these, and it's not necessarily an issue, but if you're in a heavy congested area and you're having to go through these repeaters, if it only has a set number of frequencies, so if all of those frequencies are taken, you're going to have to sit there and wait 
until the repeater clears to where you can move on to the, uh, get your signal through. This will be an example of a communication system. Ooh, let me get my pointer up. So you have your portable. You have your portable here. Your portable radio then goes to the repeater. The repeater then amplifies that signal over the distance to get to the base station to where it ultimately gets to dispatch. The same thing from your truck. If it's too far out to where it can't reach dispatch on its own, it'll send it to the repeater. The repeater then sends it to the base station, which then dis transfers it down to the dispatch center. In today's day and age, we're moving away from an analog type system to more of a digital system where uh, it's operating more kind of like off the signal that our cell phones do. Um, this does allow us to operate on more of a crowded radio frequency because now our repeaters and everything is able to handle more frequencies. Um, it also allows information to be transmitted uh, digitally, or excuse me, through computers, um, through mobile data terminals. It also allows us to encode our transmissions. So before, where any anyone could go to the local uh, radio shack, pick up a uh, radio scanner, they could then listen into anyone's dispatch if they knew what the frequency they were on. Now with the way it is, it allows us to have a more of a secure network that, do you, does that necessarily mean you should be telling patient information over the radio? No, not at all. But it allows us to um, control who can listen to what we're saying. Because sometimes we do want to, we are needing to say stuff that is confidential. And you may be relaying some patient information that is needed over the radio. So we do need to have it encoded to where it's secure to an extent. With the mobile data terminals, the great thing with them is if your system is set up for it, um, when dispatch is getting your the patient information to you, they can go ahead and start sending that information to you also straight into your data terminal. So that way you can pull up your PCR or your patient care report and go ahead and start looking at some of that information. They can also go ahead and send you... Uh, information about the call that you're going on as far as their geographical position so that way you can go ahead and pull up a map and they can also track you while you're going and ensure that you're going the right way cell phones these are becoming more of commonplace within the EMS community before if you needed to talk to uh, the hospital you had to talk through radios now it is a very common place to where you use your cell phone to communicate with dispatch or not excuse me not dispatch but the hospital versus using a radio the benefit over it it makes a lot more you have better sound quality um, because you're not necessarily having to if you're out in a rural area you may have bad radio communication so you, you may hear a lot of squelch or you're going in and out Whereas a cell phone, you're able to hear it a lot clearer. Also, cell phones, it's easy to maintain them. Um, and you also have an increase with privacy of communications because it's a lot easier if you're needing to call into the hospital and you want to say what you need to say in private. You can just simply walk away, go to another room, and make your communication that way. Also, if you're on scene of a motor vehicle accident, and you're having to, and you can take a picture of the accident of just the vehicle with no patient um, confidentiality and breach. So that way you can then in turn and use it and show it to the hospital when you get there. So that way they have a better idea of what happened. However, with great benefit does come risks. Uh, in the event of a massive incident cell phone towers can quickly become overwhelmed 
9-11, for example, when the, t uh, when the towers, the Pentagon, got attacked, many people started calling on the cell phones. To the extent that the towers became overwhelmed. So what do you think the cell phone companies did in return? They started shutting people off. They were turning people off from where they could not make phone calls. And it's not because they were trying to make it to where anyone, someone else can make a call. It's so that way the network is opened up for emergency providers. But it's a very tedious task for them to do. When the tornado hit in an enterprise, the same thing happened here for us. Everybody tried calling their friends and their family to ensure that these children were safe that the towers became overwhelmed and it was, became very difficult for people to make a phone call. You can also have telemetry that's used within our communication system. What this allows is for transmission of patient data and our EKGs and vital signs to be transmitted um, to facilities. Who here has ever watched the show Emergency? It's a very old show. Um, it's about uh, when EMS was first starting. Well, if you ever saw that show, you, uh, when they call it in and they say, "Hey, I got a, I got a cardiac, a strip to show you or a 12 lead to show you," um, they flip a switch on their end, the doc flips a switch on his end, and he can see it. Well, we have to, it still have that same premise, only a little bit more up to date. Now we, well, instead of just saying you know, all they see is a little blip at a time. We can actually send them a fax of our 12 lead from our cardiac monitor. We can transmit pending your service and the hospital is set up for it. Um, they can see when we have them on the cardiac monitor. They can watch that strip. They can see when we take vital signs. They can see everything that we do that it is set up for. And it just ensures that continuity of care continues from the time that the patient's picked up all the way through discharge from the hospital. You can also have satellite communication. This is used commonly in remote areas um, where getting radio communication would be either very expensive or is not capable. Now fortunately in our area this is not very commonplace for us to have to use SATCOM. But in places like in Alaska, um, maybe even in some of the desert areas out west, in Afghanistan and Iraq, where they don't have the ability to just pick up the radio and communicate, they may have to use uh, communications that bounce off satellites in space so that way they can get communications needed and get the assistance that they needed. All of our communications is, is, is governed by the FCC or the Federal Communications Commissions. Whenever you pick up that radio and you key up that mic, they are, they are listening to what you're saying. And let me rephrase. They're not listening to what you're saying every time. But if anything ever comes up, the FCC is the ones that are governing it and can, get, and can find you for it. When you want to build an open up a new base station, put up a new tower, uh, get new equipment, FCC has to come down and approve it. Uh, they have they limit how much power your transmitter can put out. If you're having frequencies, they, they monitor, establish and assign you your radio frequencies. You cannot use any other freak. They also um, set regulations that can to help limit the interference that is given to our radio broadcasts. So that way we can ensure that most of the time we're able to communicate that there's no one that there, we don't have to worry about anything anyone stepping on top of us. And also they bar the use of obscene and profane language within broadcasts. So that way, because so when you're communicating on our on these radios, make sure that you are communicating in a professional manner. Imagine that Big Brother is always listening. All right. There's also system maintenance that needs to be maintained. Now, as far as routine cleaning, 
changing the chart, making sure the batteries are charged and carrying backup batteries, that's on us. Okay, we want to make sure that we keep them clean by uh, manufacturer standards. Usually, you know, damp cloth and a little bit of soap, mild detergent should be a, good to clean it off. As far as maintenance as, to the our equipment, unless you are specifically trained to work on these radios, you don't need to be trying to maintain them. You'll have your service will have someone who comes in and services the equipment, make sure that it's still in service, any kind of maintenance work that needs to be done, they'll do it at that time. All right? You should never be doing maintenance on these radios. When we communicate, we're communicating with multiple different people. We can be communicating with dispatch, med control, um, receiving facility personnel, other, faci uh, other EMS providers. So you want to make sure that you're communicating professionally at all times because you're not just communicating with your partner and patient, but everybody. So make sure that you're using plain English. Um, don't use any jargon. All right. If you don't know how to say a, a big word, use plain English. Make sure you listen before transmitting. When you hit that button, after depressing the put the talk button, it's not press it and then you got a hot mic. It might take a second for it to beep to let you know that you have a hot mic. Otherwise, because somebody else might already be talking. So make sure that it's clear first. If you get orders over the radio, make sure that you understood it properly. Echo those orders back. Okay, Whether you're talking on the radio or on your cell phone, always read back any orders so that we everyone can make sure um, that they heard you. Instead of saying yes and no over the radio, say affirmative and negative. Yes and no can easily be misinterpreted for something else. This will be a, an example of a progression of radio transmission that's also in, within your book. So you get a call. Tones go off at your station. Wallace EMS, Wallace EMS, medical call, 123 Sunshine Street, female patient, chest pain. Alright, we've been dispatched. We acknowledge the call. Wallace EMS copy. Wallace EMS will be in route, 123 Sunshine. Um, you want to make sure that you notify any other agencies that might be needed, such as a fire engine or a life flight um, anything along those lines once you arrive on scene you want to get back on the radio Wallace EMS dispatch dispatch go we're arriving on scene 123 sunshine dispatch will then come across and copy that they've that they've understood you'll go into the house uh, you'll treat the patient or excuse me you'll assess the patient Start treatment on the patient if needed. And then depending on what protocol state, if you need to contact med control uh, to get orders or anything like that, you'll contact med control and get your orders to do any procedures that are needed. Um, you'll then, once you load the patient up in the truck, back on the radio, while it's EMS dispatch, dis uh, go ahead. While it's EMS being route, uh, miracle Hospital, one patient, non-emergent, one patient, emergency traffic, whatever. So that way they know that you're en route to the hospital and how you're going. While you're en route, whoever's in the back of the truck will contact your receiving hospital. Give them a, a verbal report, a brief verbal report of what they're bringing in. So that way if they need to, they can go ahead and start getting equipment ready. Once you arrive to the hospital, you'll get on the radio again. Well, it's EMS dispatch. Dispatch, go ahead. Arriving Miracle Hospital. And then you'll go in, drop your patient off. Um, once you're getting ready to leave the hospital, you get back on the radio. Well, it's EMS dispatch. Dispatch, go. 
uh, departing Miracle Hospital back in service. That way they know that you're in service, that you're available for a call. When you're communicating on the radio, you want to make sure that you have it turned on. If you're having to set to a specific channel or frequency, make sure that you have it set properly before you pick up the radio. Make sure you listen before you transmit or adjust the volume as needed. Uh, and then when you push that button, make sure to talk. Make sure you wait a second before you go speak on the radio. With speaking, excuse me. Make sure that you keep your mic about two to three inches from your mouth, so that way you don't. It doesn't sound like you're trying to eat the mic, and you hear a lot of within it. Speak slowly and clear, so that way people can understand you, and be calm. Okay, if you are calm on the radio, it's, it'll ensure that you're slow and clear, so that way everybody can hear you. Because if you're, let's say you're on a scene and then, you know, it gets bad, you shouldn't get on the radio and go, "What was the MS dispatch flash fires?" Blah, 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 blah. You get so excited that no one can hear you. Stay calm. Wall CMS dispatch, dispatch PD, reference assault in progress. You know, someone pulls out a gun, someone shoots. Wall CMS dispatch, dispatch PD, shots fired, shots fired, shots fired. That way they can understand you, okay? Uh, whoever you're calling to, Wall CMS dispatch. Dispatch will come across and say, go ahead. Or they may say, stand by, okay? So that way they know, alright, we know you're trying to talk to us, but stand by, I'm talking to, I need to finish this communication with somebody else. When you're on the radio, keep your transmissions brief. There may be someone needing to talk also. So you don't need to be sitting there and talking on the radio for 20 minutes. Know what you're going to say before you get on that, before you pick up that mic. So that way everything can be done in, a, in an organized manner. Uh, don't use any jargon. Don't use any slang words. Just use plain English. When you say a number that can be confusing over the air, follow with the digits. For example, if you say 13, it can be confused with 14. Okay? So, 13, 1, 3, there you go. Make sure that anything that you state over the radio is objective. Don't do anything subjective from your patient assessment over it. If you get any medical orders, make sure you echo them back. And any important information that you're given, such as addresses, so that way when you go into the hospital, right, or when you get dispatched, write down the address so you know where you're going. If when you're giving any medication orders, write your order status that are given to you, so that way you can refer, that way you make sure that you don't miss something. Uh, make sure that you remember that when you pick up that radio everybody and you hit that mic, everybody that has uh, access to that is going to hear you. Um, say affirmative for yes, negative for no. When you're done, say over. And wait for confirmation from the receiving party that they heard what you said. When communicating over cell phones, as far as verbal reports, the format of it should be the same. It should be done in an organized area. Uh, make sure that you're aware of cellular dead spots. Well, yes, we, there's, we usually have a lot of uh, coverage in our area. There are areas definitely out in the county that we don't, you don't get very good cell service. If your cell phones go down, make sure that you have a backup plan for communication. Whether it is using going reverting back to radios, uh, or just simply going back to uh, having someone who's running if you're on scene of something, make sure you know important telephone numbers such as hospitals, dispatch, uh, the trauma communications, the poison control. Excuse me. So that way you're not sitting there having to try to figure it out. With us, everybody having a cell phone these days, you can program these numbers into your phone. 
All right, we're going to take a break here for a minute. Um, Y'all get up, stretch your legs, go to the restroom if you need to, get something to drink. Um, We'll pick up with communicating with dispatch when we come back.